on feet. Our first competitor at the top of the hill for the unified Germany. It's the defending world champion in two-man bobsledding, Rudy Lochner. His brakeman, Marcus Zimmerman, Lochner, 38 years old, stunned the bobsled world last year when he won the event in Altenburg, Germany. Both of these guys are great athletes and are the best starting team in the world last year. Let's watch their start. Pay attention as Lochner gets ready here. He left some of his clothing in the star house. He's not wearing any socks. Boom. Power. Boy, Lochner is the power man in that sled, isn't he? Well, 526. That says it all about Rudy Lochner. The guy with the best start at the top. Where's the brakeman, John? Jeez, he's tucked down so low you can't even see him. Here they go. He jumps forward and grabs onto that start handle and pushes with great power to get that sled up and out of the... Great, great feet. Rudy Lochner putting himself in a great chance to take the lead here. There he is in the Chrysler. Let's watch for the speed. cost him some time. Yeah, he dragged quite a while there, John. Rudy Lochner, the present world champion. Ooh, he's a little high in that corner, too. Making some uncharacteristic mistakes here for Rudy Lochner. Drew it down, but what a time. 57.30 with mistakes down the track. Here he comes out of the Chrysler. He gets out of there a little bit early, puts him right into the right-hand wall, which is un unusual. Usually they go into the left-hand wall coming out of that curve. Okay, next up at the start, Italian number one, a pleasant surprise for Italy. Gunter Huber, 26 years old. How about them pants? This my boys here, John. I sure like Gunther Hoover. He's part of the famous Hoover family that has three losers on the Italian national team. Yeah, and he's also been doing some great bobsledding the last two years. He went from luge to bobsled. Been his second in Alphaville last year at the World Cup test there. Really surprised a lot of people. And that start time, 5.32. That's a very good start for him. I wouldn't be surprised if we see 74 plus mile an hour speed down here with that type of start. He finished fourth in the four-man at Alphaville, too. There's 74.5, the best speed so far. He's a great pilot. Barely touched. Oh, that loose sport taught him how to drive these bobsled tracks. Gunter Hoover, one of the favorites in Elberville, rushing to the finish. His time, 57.77. Good enough for second place for Huber. Canadian and American teams yet to come. So stay with us on Winter Speed. at the top of the hill from Innsbruck Ingo Appel 30 years old he won the four-man World Cup last year at the Alberville track at the pre-olympic test race much better four-man pilot because he doesn't give up as much at the start in the two-man he hangs around for those single-digit placings but he's a much better four-man pilot and you'll see he suffers up here at the start his brakeman Harold Winkler has been with him for six years Again, the same start technique as Rudy Lochner, where he stands behind the sled, runs forward, and then grabs the start handle. 5.34 start, competitive, but 800 behind Lochner. Look how low he is in the sled. You can't see the brakeman. You can barely see his eyes above that gallon. 
Lockyer's one of the more consistent drivers on the bottom of the tour. In Joe Affel, in curve eight. That's about ooh, a little high there. That cost him. Watch for the speed. That's 73.9. That cost him. You can see that up there in curve eight. That's his major mistake so far. Watch how he runs up into the handle. Lifts that slug out of the hole. The speed man in the back pushing and running as fast as he can to get that quick start time. Again, coming out of eight here, he makes a miscalculation. Skidding to the right, just touching the wall. Just touching the wall, cost you time in this sport. Next up on line, one of the favorites in the competition. 32-year-old Greg Haydenluck from Toronto. His brakeman, David McCatron. Uh, Haydenluck just got married. Wife's name's Peggy. What the? Good. Very important start. Watch the power here on this. <laughs> One of the favorites in the competition. <laughs> Haydenluck's a two-time Canadian decathlon champion. That certainly helps him on the start. 5.31. Lost a little bit up there, but he's got the home track advantage. Here's that power. He's had the same start as Larker, running behind the sled, up, pushing that start handle, getting quickly into the sled and down. In the, in the sled pretty quick there. That's a nice start. This works in part. Let's watch for the speed. 74-3, great speed. Listen to the hometown crowd cheering them on. Canadians only took one run during every training heat this week. Greg Haydenlock from Toronto. His father was an in, uh, founded policeman for 25 years. Charging to the finish, his time. 57.56. Second, second spot overall. And that says a lot about how Rudy Lochner attacked his course earlier in the heat. Greg Haydenlock from Toronto. Second place overall right now for Canada. Back up at the top. One of the famous names in bobsledding. Wolfgang Hoppe. 34 years old. Used to be from East Germany. Now sliding for Germany. He won the four-man world championships last year. Won two gold medals in Sarajevo in 84. Won two silvers at the Calgary Games in 88. And if he wins one more medal at any Olympic, at the Olympics in Albertville, he'll become the most prolific Olympic bobsled driver ever. His brakeman, Rennie Hanneman, both of these guys, very powerful athletes. Just watch the explosion at this start. Did you see how cleanly Hoppy got into that sled at the start, John? One jump, one jump in and down. He was in quick. How about the break when he's in there quick too, tucked in behind him? This is... Here he goes, running down one movement, up and in. Whoa, that says it all. That's the way it's done, right there. We should be seeing 75 mile an hour speeds down here in this straighter with the Chrysler. 73.6, not very good speed at all, considering the start he got. That means he's gonna be losing time to Lockyer down here. Whoa, he's gonna start like that, he should have a lot more speed. He must have made a mistake up top. Oh, he's way off the pace. Doesn't seem to be a problem down there. Perhaps he got the wrong runners on tonight. Could be the wrong runners. Good point, John B. Charges into the finish. Eighth place overall. You're talking a guy that's got more medals around his neck than anybody else in the competition. Had the best start. Ends up in eighth. Maybe it's the runners. I think they may have made some miscalculation here about the conditions tonight or something because it's very uncharacteristic for Hoppy to end up in eighth place.
Up at the top of the track, another one of the favorites from Canada. 29-year-old Chris Laurie from Windsor, his brakeman. Ken LeBlanc from Ottawa. Laurie, very determined, needs a good start. Rudy Lochner threw a fantastic time in earlier in the heat. Everybody else for chasing. Let's rock! Get up! to challenge the sport. Watch from speed. 74-4, right up there with the best speed we've seen so far. The Canadian coach told me today they expect to win this competition today. Eighth year of competition. Got the home track advantage. He's 2,300 up the pace, though. Into the finish. Should be mid-57. 57-60, good enough. For third overall behind his teammate, Hayden Luck. I think he really suffered up at the start. Watch how low he gets beneath the start handles here and lunges forward. It wasn't enough for the fastest start time, though. Nice moving into the sled. Coming into the Chrysler here, beautiful line. Not a mistake to be seen here. He's been down this track hundreds of times. Nary a mistake. Let's see how cleanly he gets out of the Chrysler here. Beautiful. Rudy Lochner of Germany in the lead with two Canadian sleds right behind. Coming up. His brakeman, David Tomatis. Albert, better four-man driver than two-man driver because he also has a problem starting the sled in the two-man. A Lochner-type start. 5.8. Back is an eternity of time in a sport of boxing. I meant he's a much better four man participant because he gets better start times. Pretty good pilot down the course, though. You've really got to have a lot of power to get these legs going, John. They're heavy. Ooh, what does he hide there in that corner? Up oh, and down on the Omega. Nice little loop there. That's going to scrub off time. High in eight. He straightened it out here, approaching the Chrysler. Oh, oh, there's a major loop! Oh, sideways out of the... Oh, hi! Chris Albert having a lot of problems here in his first World Cup competition of the year. As he charged to the finish, Chris Albert Grimaldi the Monaco threw him down. I think the time, he breaks a minute. But I think he made a lot of mistakes down the track. Well, he's oversteering that sled, John. Let me get, get away from him. driving too hard to the left, too hard to the right. Look how high he gets up on this curve. He's going to steer too hard coming down the other way. Just touch the wall, steering hard away from that wall again. Too much oversteering, not enough finesse. Okay, baby. Come on. Come on. Now up to the top of the track, it's USA number one. 29 year old Brian Scheimer from Naples, Florida. His brakeman, Jeff Woodard from Schenectady. He's 26 years old. Both big, powerful athletes. Come on, guys. Come on. Okay, take it out. Let's go. Who are you, Woodard? Who are you? Jeffy. Come on. Come on. Take over. Right. 
Come on, Wooder. Come on, Jeff. Come on, baby. Jeff. Come on, Wooder. 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 Come on, Woo
then all of a sudden we didn't see him last year. That's because all the Latvians protested and wouldn't compete for the Soviet Union on the World Cup bobsled circuit. It's nice to see him back. He's sitting up a little high in this sled, but uh, Bregman is way down low. Let's watch for the speed. 72.6, this late in the heat, that's not bad speed. by these Latvians. They're, it's so nice to see them on the track, smiling, laughing, running around. Different appearance than last year, that's for sure. Here it comes, the historical sporting event here. The Latvians threw in down, Sanders Prusis. Time of 58.84, but it's the first time ever a Latvian team has competed in international sports competition in 40 years. That's the end of our first heat coverage. First place, it's Rudy Lochner of Germany. The two Canadian sleds are right behind Brian Scheimer of the United States in fourth. Second heat action coming up. This is the guy with two gold medals on his neck from 84, two silvers at the Calgary Olympic Games in 88. He's the world champion four-man driver, finished third in the world championship last year. Big mystery why he's in 10th place at the end of the first heat. Five twenty-four start time, slower than his first one. You know, we said after that first run, John, that maybe he had the wrong runners on for this uh, for that run. Let's see if he made a change. Maybe he put other runners on. He couldn't change. There's no allowance for changing any more of those runners. But he had the best start time in the first heat five seventeen. New track record here at Canada Olympic Park. But his his mystery for Huffy right now is what happened. And we'll find out right now with speed. He had no speed in the Chrysler. So anything above seventy-three five means good speed. 73.3, just average speed. This is a mystery sled of the competition. If he moves up in the standings, I'd have to attribute uh, his, his errors in the first run to driver error. Well, he'll be at the top of the leaderboard right here, but it won't be enough to put him in the medal of contention. Wolfgang Hoppe of Germany ducks his head for aerodynamics. Finish time, 58.12. He's in first place overall with many yet to come. Up at the start, in ninth place at the end of the first heat, from Austria, Ingo Appel, his brakesman, Harold Wakler, probably one of the biggest men in the competition of the brakes. This is a four-man specialist. Good! Five thirty-three start time. You see in the start there, they were wavering back and forth where they were running. Oh, he just wavered back and forth there with the sled too. That's a unprofessional mistake by such a veteran driver as Ingo Appel. Well, you can see that sled going back and forth, so he's oversteering his straightaways, John. That's right, he sure is. And even at the start, he's the furthest man back on the push start. He stands right in the back of the sled on the start. He's a better four-man pilot. We've already mentioned that. We consider these two mans like little sports cars. We consider the four mans like a big Cadillac. 73.5, it's the best speed we've seen so far in this heat. Considering the mistakes and the efficient start he's got, this is not a bad heat here for the veteran Austrian pilot. It's not a bad heat, but he's been making a few driver errors, especially out of the prize. Oh, he's 1,500 down to Hoppy right now. That means the German Hoppy will go ahead and right here. It's going to be a 58.25 or so. 58.23 for Ingo Appel. So those couple mistakes up top cost him a place right there with Wolfgang Hoppy, second overall. 
Two sled down with many yet to come here at World Cup bobsledding from Calgary. Stay with us. Have you ever seen someone when they come out of a salon? They're happy and they look great. Our next competitor, Italy number one, Gunther Huber, his brakeman, Stefan Ticci. Huber, one of the most famous Luge families in the world, are the Hubers from Italy. Brother's a world champion many times over. He transferred to bobsledding three years ago, has been made some tremendous gains in the sport, including a second place finish in the two-man event at the Alberville World Cup at the Olympic test last year. Established himself as one of the Olympic favorites on that track. We like the uniforms. Fifth place overall, he needs a good heat. Five third four start time. A little slower than his first one. You know, he had a, he looked like a track athlete there on the start in, in his stance. Not a big man, not a lot of power there, but he still managed to get great starts. He's a great four-man pilot also. Gets a little bit to two-man, but great driver. And I think all that loose training, John, really helped out because he's made tremendous strain, gains in the sport with only driving in his third year. You're going to see a lot of Gunter in the future. Again, his driving skills puts him in the top four or five every race that he's in. 73-8, best speed we've seen so far in this crucial second heat. Very few mistakes here. Oh, he's got a 700 lead to play with there. He's down two, so it's gonna be real close. Hoover rushing to the finish. He needs a 58-19 for the lead. His time, 58-01. Gunter Hoover of Italy will not lose any placings but the four best sleds in the world are yet to come. Guaranteed at least fifth place. Watch his start. Look at his foot back on that wooden bar. Runs forward, grabs that bar. A lot of power there. That's how he makes up for his lack of size. He legs it out down the hill, and he gets 100% out of his effort. And a great driver, too. Watch him through the Chrysler here. No movement. That sled is on a perfect line through there. It doesn't vary up or down. What a driver. Well, that loose training paid off for Gunter Hoover, who's now at top of the leaderboard. But uh, next up, in fourth on, place, at the end on, of the Jeff. first heat, come the on, USA man. number come one, on, Brian Shiner, Naples, Florida. His brakeman, Jeff Woodard, like from Schenectady, New York. Like Woodard played football at UCLA. Great on, track of field come athlete. Shiner and Woodard, the second best in start time in the first heat. Come on, Jeff. Boy, they were like a turbo on that start. That's only 100 slower than their start the first time. The only flaw in his run, their first run, was going into the finish curve. Otherwise, I think he would have moved up one or two places here. Well, you get the start time like that, you have a chance to make a little minute mistake down below. Scheimer had a great heat going to the finish. Let's see if he can maintain the speed and the driving ability. Scheimer's fourth year driver. Probably one of the best athletes in the front seat for competition. There's not much to separate these top four sledders here. Any mistakes from here on down is going to be costly. 7 8, 3, 6. That's not as much speed as the Italian. Very nice out of front. This is where he made his mistake down here. Oh, he's got 1,600 fleet, though. He's very low in this lead. He's got his head way down, sucking every aerodynamic speed he can out of there. 58, 11, 3, 57, 90 or so. 57, 89. Great heat by the United States. Brian Scheimer. When you have a great start time with the top, it gives you a great ability to have a great finish time at the bottom. Scheimer just threw it down the track. Nice run, 
you by Brian. Let's look at him here. This is where he made his mistake in the first heat, John. Okay, coming into the finish curve. Here's where it was. Got in too late. Cut ice up on the finish curve. He didn't make that mistake this second run. Brian Scheimer puts himself at a good chance for the medals. We'll find out real quick, because up at the top, it's Canada number three, his nearest competitor, Chris Laurie, seven hundredths of a second, separating him from Scheimer. Laurie's going to give up a little time at the start, but he's got the home track advantage. And let's lay back here and listen to the hometown. Hometown crowd, cheer him on. That's back! It's good. Up! Identical time to his first start time, 5.31, hometown favorite, Chris Laurie from Windsor, Ontario, his brakeman Ken LeBlanc from Ottawa, great athlete, these two have been paired up for a couple years. He's the favorite in this race, I, he doesn't have a whole lot of time to make up down here either. Well, they've been training on this track for four straight years, their coach told them they got the best equipment, they got the best training, they got the best team, it's now time to put up or shut up. They've been very consistent on the World Cup Tour last year also. Red Slory, third place in the World Cup. Probably one of the most mellow drivers you'll ever want to meet. It's a nearly flawless run, but look how high his head up is in, is in the sled. He's had a perfect all over stick there. He's Hard to figure out where he lost any time here, but he has. There's Shimer moves ahead of him. That means Laurie's in second place overall. Sometimes in bobsledding, you can have a perfect trip and not know where you made a mistake. This might be the case for Christ Laurie. Let's take a look back at the Chrysler here, John. It's hard to figure out where he lost time. He took a little scrub off there at the beginning, John. We just missed it there, but look at his line. He's very low in the curve, which is good, but no wavering. 73.3 miles an hour speed in there. That's not as good as the other two teams. Hard to figure out, might be in the runner. Brian Scheimer, the United States, top of the leaderboard. He's guaranteed a bronze medal in this first World Cup of the year. Chris Laurie in second, Gunter Huber in third. The final two sleds when we come back. down to the bottom of the run, but they may not know how they get back to the top. Once the sleds have stopped in the braking stretch, they're loaded into protective wooden scabbards, and the sled is then dragged back into a transport. Once two are loaded onto the truck, they're taken back up to the top of the run. Mark, is anything I hated in bob sliding was moving those sleds around. Back up to the top, the guy in second place from Canada, it's Greg Haydenluck, his brakeman, David McCatcher. They got a real <laughs> chance for at least a silver medal, but they want to challenge Lochner for the gold. This is real close. If he could get a great start here, he could pull this one out. Five twenty-nine start time, 200 faster than the first run. You know, he was very tentative on the beginning of that run. Looked like he almost wasn't ready to go. David McCacker and his brakeman, great start, great entry to the sled, great athlete behind him. Hayden Luck, father was a Mountie for 25 years. You know the guy's discipline. Seven years on the Canadian team here. He's an experienced driver, very skilled. The Catlock guy, track and field specialist. He's breaking way down in the back of that sled. That's very good for aerodynamics. His speed, 73.6, the same as Shimers. A little bit better than his teammate Laurie's. He's going to have to uh, run a perfect run here. Shimers is very close to him. Greg Hayden Luck of Canada. Schreimer down by 1100s, at 600s. So it looks like Haydenluck, unless he makes a bad mistake here at the end, should be atop the leaderboard within four or 500s right here. His time, oh, picked up time in the bottom. Greg Haydenluck guarantees himself a silver medal for Canada in this event in the first World Cup of the year. A pressure play by the Canadian Greg Haydenluck. He knows.
Here they come through the last couple of turns. Going into the finish. Very nice. Nice position. The brakeman way down on the sled. Well, ducked his head in there at the end, and that might have given an extra couple hundred because he's going to need it. It's almost an insurmountable lead that the German Rudy Lackner, the defending world champion in the sport of two man bobsledding, who has a 2,600th lead on Hayden Luck. The best, one of the best starting teams in the world, too. Let's watch. His brakeman, Marcus Zimmerman, and Lochner are both from Berchtesgarden, Germany. A surprise world championship victory last year. He wants to prove it was no fluke. By a 25 start time. You know, he took a couple movements getting into that sled. It wasn't real perfect, but it might be enough to do the job. Well, Brian Scheimer of the United States has the best starts in the two heats of the competition. He's guaranteed at least a medal. Lockner has to make a serious mistake to lose this race. You think he's going to be conservative, John? He can't be. How can he be conservative here? He's got to go after it. He can't. He's got first place almost locked up. 73.6 is good speed. This is 73.4. Is that going to be enough? Well, if we see a plus 20 here, it's going to be close. The next clock to tell. Correction, Germany one. Plus seven. Rudy Lachner of Germany. Looks like he's got this locked up. The first World Cup event of the year. Should be about a 58.90. His time, 57.90. There it is. Rudy Lachner proved that his World Championship victory last year in Altenburg was no fluke. His first major two-man competition afterwards, he wins. Wow, what a race. Rudy Lochner does it again. So, hello, Bob Sledding. Here's Rudy Lochner. That was no fluke. He's ready for the Olympic Games. Great competition overall, but the Germans put a little distance between them and the Americans, and this is how they did it, John. Look at this start. No, no socks on, no gloves. What power pushing that sled down. Look how far he runs down the track. Nice moving in. Two movements, though. That was the only fault in that start. Across the finish line there, he knew. Boy, just barely get across the eye. He's got that fist up. Wow. What a race. Rudy Lochner does it again. There's Rudy Lochner's in first. Greg Hayden Luck, the Canadian, in second. And Brian Scheimer, the United States, in third. When we come back, we'll check in.